So you've seen all these amazing reviews out there on all these battery operated mowers and you're thinking, man, I'm gonna jump ship. I'm gonna do the ecologically friendly thing and I'm going battery operated. Well, Toro sent me their mower last year. I decided to ditch the real mowing this year and really dive into this battery operated field. Now, I wanted to pick two mowers that were relatively in the same price range. We've got the Toro on the left, which comes in at $629, and we've got the Ego for an extra $100 bucks or $749. Now, if I were to compare the two, it'd be like Ferrari versus Lamborghini of the battery-operated systems, but not really. <laughs> These are the base models. Believe it or not, $700, bucks, this is what you get. Now, while these pretty ponies cost $700, I picked up this Walmart special, this nice Husqvarna right there, 700H for $300, just to see the difference. Now, let's go check them out. We'll start with the Toro. First off is the air induction system, which technologically they tried to get really, really fancy. They put a hood scoop in here, like you see on a 1985 Honda Civic, uh, and it supposedly pushes the grass further into the bag. No induction system. No system on this one. Uh, welcome back to the 1940s here, where we have our little flapper to raise and lower the wheels. Now, I gotta say, a little disappointed in this system. Um, the other two units have these quick releases, which are really nice. There's all four wheels at the same time. You wanna raise it, you wanna lower it. It's that simple. And this one, it's the exact same situation. Now, they do have numbers on here that you think would be conditional on the height of cut, which they're relatively close, not too bad. Now this is where the details kind of come into play. This has what's called a personal pace. The harder you push on the handle, the faster the mower goes, so it emulates your natural pace. This system does not have it. It's got some handlebars. It's got these green buttons. The nice thing about this setup is that whether or not you're running the blades, you can still use this and push the mower forward, which is actually kind of a cool feature because uh, you don't feel like you're gonna cut off somebody else's limbs, which is, which is nice. Uh, then coming over to the Husqvarna, it's pretty typical mower. It's, it's got its uh, self-propelled wheels. Now starting the mower's pretty simple. On this one, you pull the clutch down, you push the button. It stops. So the Ego is a little bit different. If you have it in a carrier mode, you actually have to pull the handles out, put this back. I'm gonna lift this up so I don't chop the grass, but then you hit the power button, pull the clutch. Interesting enough, it will not go if you don't have the rails fully extended. It's actually marked on this as well. Now getting to the other knick-knacky things, the Ego comes with lights, which actually is kind of a nice bonus. I wish they were a little bit brighter. Uh, the lights are actually pretty simple to use. It's got an LED button here, on for on, off for off, and you don't have to have the mower necessarily actuated in order to see the lights, which is a nice touch. Neither one of these two models has that, but again, we're dealing with $300, $629, $749. Now, when it comes to adjusting the actual height of the bars, we go back to the 1940s with the, uh, with the Toro, which is awesome. You gotta, you gotta hit both sides, right? And then it will go down, it will go up, which is nice. Uh, this is about as tall as it goes, which I'm gonna show you a little bit of a height comparison. Uh, Ego, again, their design is much more superior in my opinion on ease of use it's a one touch again this is for carrying things and you can go all the way back down to the bottom for you short people very very simple uh, with the Husqvarna you basically have to undo these knobs here and put it up and down it's it just takes a long long time it's not worth it. it's kind of a set it forget it situation Oh, well, hello there. Good to see ya. Good to see ya. Didn't think you cared so much. That's cool, buddy. <laughs> Ooh, Mr. Attentive. Oh, oh, oh. 
Oh, 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 you were so excited. So excited. Okay, okay. Oh, careful with the nut punch, dude. The one thing that I really, really enjoy about the Toro is how compact you can get this thing to store. You take the bag off, pull these up, you put the handles here, and you can really store this thing with a, a pretty small footprint. When it's coming down to Mo technology, we're using a single blade here with a mulch system on it. Uh, this is the actual mulcher. And on this, we're using a quad cut, similar to what Tor is using, uh, with what we would consider a high lift blade. So it's pushing the grass back. Um, and you notice over time, a lot of this grass is sticking. And with the, the deck that I have, I've had it nice and greased. I uh, haven't had any too big of issues by comparison. Now, both these mowers have been used about the same amount of time. It's been about a year and a half. The only thing I haven't done with the Ego is cut uh, turf type tall fescue. Uh, I've cut bluegrass, ryegrass, uh, some creeping fine fescue with it. Haven't really gotten into the warm season grasses, no St. Augustine, no zoysia, nothing like that. But cut quality wise, this is where I just wanna show you guys. So that way it's not one of those talking vlog reviews. You can actually see it. So I think what we'll do just to keep these things even is we'll do a couple of side-by-side -side passes. So you'll be able to get a real hands-on view of what I'm talking about. Okay, so for calibration, I've got the Ego on level two and I'm just using the stick and measuring it to the ground. And this is about our height right here. So it's almost two inches. We're about the same height, which I'm really happy with. But the interesting thing is the Toro is not marked, which kind of drives me absolutely nutty. There's no indicators on here to tell you the height of cut. And, but we're going to start a little bit taller, but with here, the nice thing is, is this is pretty, uh, pretty much where we're at. Two is two. Now for this test, we are going to be bagging our clippings because I, I want to show you how much clippings are actually going in the bag to see quality of cut and also to see if we're running into any issues. All right, so let's take a look at our results in real time. You can see the, the side on the Ego, fairly clean. I, I would dare say it's just slightly, maybe a quarter of an inch taller, uh, which may or may not make that big of a difference, but here in a sec, we'll drop it all the way to the ground. Uh, this side would be the Toro, this side is the Ego, and we're not quite cutting as much off the top. I dare say the Toro's got a little bit of better vacuum on it, a little bit of a cleaner cut, as you can see, which actually happy to see it. But regardless of the cut quality itself, that could just be because the deck isn't quite as low. Uh, so we're going to slam them both to the ground and take a look at it. But one big issue, right? You'll notice, look at the clippings around the Ego next to none. Look at the clippings around the Toro when I stopped it. It is one messy, messy lady. She's a naughty little girl. Um, but we've also got a lot of clippings in the grass, um, which we actually don't have this problem on the ego side. This is where it gets interesting right here. Take a sneak peek. You can see how it's bunching up just straight down there. It's really bunching. And when we take the bag off, let's see if I can straddle. I used to do my kegels. Okay. So we take this off and look, look at that. It just starting to bind up there, which explains why we have so much grass. And this is about the easiest grass in the world to cut, it's ryegrass. Um, but I have the same problem with my blue and it drives me absolutely nutty, look at this. And we just did two passes and you're thinking, okay, well, that's an indication the bag is full. So we look at the bag, there's literally next to nothing in this bag, nothing. This is just ridiculous. I mean, it's laying flat, it's not doing a good job, and I got this giant mess. Now, real time here, let's go over to the Ego. The only thing I don't like about this is how you take the bag off. You have to do it underneath the bars, you can't sneak your hand above the bar. 
Um, but I dare say there's no problems here. Nothing in the chute, nothing there. Everything is in the bag, but again, we just didn't cut much, so let's do a better test. Let's lower the bolt down and do a much better test. Okay, so we've exposed a giant problem. What has been bothering me the entire time I started cutting. She's a fairly clean cutter. The only problem I have is here is every now and then we'll get these thicker parts of grass and it doesn't suction it up quite the way I would like it to. Uh, but overall, I mean, in the areas that are like normal, normal, it's great. Now, I think that's why Toro made the, uh, made the torque on demand, where if it gets in thicker stuff, it, it cuts a little bit faster. Um, but you can see the quality of the cut, it's, it's okay. I mean, we're not, really, we're not really having any problems, but here's the biggest issue, right? Look at her, nice and clean. Ego's nice and clean. Then you get over to Tora, she's a dirty girl. She drops clippings everywhere. I mean, it is so bad. I, I can't even like cut with this thing. I mean, it's, it's, I only went two passes on this where I went four, I went down and back twice. I only went down and back once here because the clippings are so bad. Now let's get into the bag, see if we can, uh, figure out what the problem is and I already know what the problem is I just want to show you guys let me take the bag off and look at this not much more grass in there at all it's this freaking design here I don't know what happened in research and development the ramp on this thing is just ridiculous I'm not sure what they were really thinking but the pitch on this it's like 45 degrees. It's like this, so the grass hits and it literally just piles up right here and doesn't go into the bag. So this one single problem has me going absolutely nutty. Now, when I was cutting turf type tall fescue, it wasn't this bad. The majority of the clippings were going in the bag. I'd say the bag go three quarters of the way full until it was like, ah, I've had enough, you gotta change me. But now that I'm cutting bluegrass and ryegrass, oh man, it piles up, it piles up fast. You take anything more, like you saw before, you take anything more than about a quarter of an inch to a half inch off the top, it is just hitting and it will not come up. And if you do a short mow, which honestly, I think the Toro cuts cleaner than the Ego. It has better suction in my opinion. But this problem of her being a messy girl like this, no thank you. I mean, this is absolutely, ridiculous we come over here to the uh to the ego and let's just take a look at it let's open the bag we've cut just as much at this point we've had it at the lowest setting as well and blam nothing there's absolutely no problems inside the chute whatsoever no grass all the grass in the bag like it should be now it's cutting clean i'm happy with it but again we've got a few suction problems where it's not lifting the blades of the grass upward but overall doesn't look that bad now just to carry my point home we're going to run that husqvarna in the exact same thickest spot that i could find in the grass just to see if we have the same problem Ran the Husqvarna now, apples to apples, uh, it did not cut quite as close as the Toro. We were pretty, pretty close, but again, Toro actually has a nice cut. The only problem is, is all this garbage. Now, at the end of the day, I have to remind myself that these are base model units. And believe it or not, 700 bucks is base model to get into battery powered mowing systems. There's a lot of things I like about the Toro. There's a lot of things I like about the Ego. The Ego cut quality was not as superior to the Toro, in my opinion. Uh, however, the fact of the matter is that wind tunnel 1985 Honda Civic scoop that they got going on, it's total fail. I don't know what in the world happened in research and development, but I don't think they actually took it out on the field and tested it. At the end of the day, I go with the Ego. 
uh, for overall wellness is well worth spending the extra hundred bucks. But if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, you'd like to add something that maybe I missed, please hit me up in the comments below. You know, I'd love to help you guys out. Until next time, guys, it's the Pest and Lawn Ginger. We're slaying lawns.